one of our clusters of trees. As you can see, they're a bit parched. Summer droughts and the heat of everything is making it a bit hard to keep up with the watering, but they're still alive, so that's a good start. We've got some more over here. One of the things we do when we plant them is we bring in uh, homemade vermicompost, uh, leaf mold compost, locally sourced organic cow manure, and some soil from an area we know is significantly more healthy. The reason for that is because, of course, this used to be a whole neighborhood, so it's not really considered the peak of soil health, so some remediation is going to be necessary. Eminent domain is the government's power to take private property for public use. Nobody particularly likes it, but occasionally it's essential to make way for roads, schools, hospitals, and the like. And Americans accept this practice as long as deprived property owners receive due process and just compensation. Under the Fifth Amendment, that's been the American way since the framers drafted the Constitution. But the Supreme Court changed the rules in 2005, when it decided Kelo versus the City of New London. Now local and state governments can take private property from an individual and transfer it to a private developer in hopes of generating more tax revenue or creating jobs. The Kelo decision equated these public benefits with public uses. That's Jeff Benedict in his 2009 book, Little Pink House. In the early 2000s, a powerful group of politicians, lobbyists, and even the then president of Little Ivy League School, Connecticut College, conspired to use eminent domain to seize the working class Fort Trumbull neighborhood, destroy the homes, and give the land to pharmaceutical corporation Pfizer. Do you realize Pfizer could be New London's savior? Pfizer is in the pharmaceutical business, Charlotte, not the savior business. Besides, we need far more space than this. Thank you, Howard. For what? For telling me what you need. <laughs> that clip is from the film adaptation of Little Pink House. The Fort Trumbull residents, unhappy with the prospect of their homes being destroyed and their land given to a private corporation, fought all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The residents lost, however and the court ruling was criticized by everyone from the NAACP, to the American Conservative Union, to the ACLU, to even President George W. Bush. And after these residents were forced out of their homes, Pfizer ended up deciding against moving to New London. So the final price tag of this for the state of Connecticut and the city of New London was approximately $78 million, and the approximately 3,200 jobs and 1.2 million in tax revenue never ended up materializing. As of today, the plot of land remains abandoned. And that's what brings us to these two gentlemen, Adam O, who asked us not to share his last name, and Hayward Gatch. They're a part of a local anarchist group called the New London Mutual Aid Collective, and they've decided to take matters into their own hands. Um, very early on, our project involved helping folks in pretty much every possible way we could imagine, so of course part of that would be food acquisition. So as a result, we did a lot of guerrilla gardening. Eventually, that involved doing some guerrilla gardening in this area. It was pretty much abandoned for close to 15 years now. And so it seemed like a great place to add some of our plants to draw from for some of our other efforts. Of course, there's a certain danger to planting in the city because you might have development in a place where you didn't expect it to happen. We had a tree and a bunch of plants in a vacant lot with a house on it that happened to be leveled last week. Um, and this is still here. So there's a bit of a strategic component to why we decided to start gardening in this area and eventually planting fruit trees in this area. The land is owned by the Renaissance City Development Association, or RCDA, and not the New London Mutual Aid Collective. Therefore, the Fort Trumbull Memorial Orchard in and of itself is pretty illegal. But that doesn't dissuade Adam and Hayward from doing their work. The American Revolution, which was fought not a quarter mile this way on the shores of New London, when uh, regiments of American loyalists, uh, loyal to the crown, to King George and to the Redcoats, uh, marched off of boats and burned the entire city to the ground. Uh, the, none of what the patriotic rebels did was 
legal, strictly speaking. Uh, they ran clinics in New London. They inoculated the city against smallpox and yellow fever. Uh, they stockpiled firearms. They grew food all over the place to feed the community because there was a British blockade of Long Island Sound. None of that community work that needed doing was strictly legal because the powers that be didn't care if folks in the community ate or had medical care or had housing. So the community had to go do it themselves. The New London Mutual Aid Collective recently received what they consider to be a credible tip that the RCDA plans to cut down their orchard. The plants may be a bit difficult to see from the road, but they're still there. Anarchist news site It's Going Down featured the orchard in late July, and on Sunday, the day newspaper quoted RCDA President Linda Morani saying that she understands people's anger, frustration, and sadness over the Fort Trumbull debacle but she did not mention whether she would allow the orchard to continue operating. The end goal for this field is a larger orchard, uh, is to food forest, uh, fields of beans, peppers, garlic, to restore the soil health of this patch of land. Obviously, it having been a residential neighborhood, it wasn't designed to be turned into an orchard overnight, um, but nor was the neighborhood uh, meant to be demolished overnight uh, at the hands of uh, the state and private companies. Uh, so it's going to take a while to get this back into any sort of ecological health. Um, but until that happens, it's a useful spot to do this work and we're going to, we're left alone, we're going to go keep on doing it. At the time of publication, the orchard is still there. Given how unpopular the Kilo Supreme Court decision was, I cannot imagine that a public figure in New London would want to be seen as destroying an active charity that exists on the Fort Trumbull property even if it is technically breaking the law. And that's especially true if the land will only be cleared so that it can continue to remain abandoned. We were looking for a place to put fruit trees. We've been gardening here for quite a while because it's available. Uh, so the coincidence of it being attached to the Fort Trumbull eviction is certainly fortunate as far as PR goes, but it wasn't the initial intent. You know, we're trying to find a place that we could turn into a food forest, and this is pretty much the largest open spot in New London, and it also is the most unused spot in New London. So it really seemed like a great option. Um, you know, so it's not so much a protest against the eminent domain, although it has become that, because a lot of people have some pretty sore feelings about that and still do. And that's absolutely understandable. You know, there are people within living memory most people in New London with a living memory saw this happen, and most people were not happy about it. 